Leanne and welcome back to another episode of Leanne and Michelle Think They're Funny. Yeah, guess what, guys? We're going to test our interview skills today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we haven't done this yet on our podcast. It's episode 14. That's right. And this is our first episode with guests. And it's a big one. Mm, yeah. We, we don't, we don't want to like start off easy. No. No, 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 no. If you're a Christian kid of the 90s, mm. early aughts, we're about to blow your mind. Yeah, your mind. Yeah. And also, if you're a mom, really, I mean, who hasn't seen Veggie, veggie Tales? Ever heard of him? Larry the Cucumber. He's on our show today. Yes, he is. He is. So, um, we're going to get to our interview, but let's introduce our guests. First of all, we have Mike Narwaki. No, if you want to pronounce... Narwaki. It's actually pronounced Narwaki, as he's going to explain on the mm, podcast. Yes, okay. So, he's the co-creator of VeggieTales and the voice of Larry the Cucumber. He's been making wholesome content for kids since 1993, um, and he created, wrote, directed um, most of those silly songs with Larry. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, those were so funny. He also lent his screenwriting and directing talents to the VeggieTale episodes, as well as their movie like Jonah and the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. We are the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. I made it sound like that was one title. It's not Jonah and the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. It's Jonah We and are the pirates, the pirates Who Don't Do Anything. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And he serves in as an assistant professor of film and animation at Lipscomb University. And he also co-hosts a weekly podcast, The Bible for Kids. And let's not forget about the remarkable Steve Taylor. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, as a recording artist, he sold over a million albums and received two Grammy nominations. His resume as a music producer includes three gold certified albums for The Newsboys. Take me to your leader, son. Oh my gosh, I love them so much and their Aussie accents. Anyway. You okay? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> and the platinum certified Sixpence None the Richer, including their smash hit, which is a legendary song, Kiss Me. Oh, I love Every that. prom. Every prom. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Okay, Steve's career as a filmmaker includes The Second Chance and Blue Like Jazz. He serves as director of the School of Theater and Cinematic Arts at Lipscomb University, a power duo. Oh, indeed. yes, yes. And they actually have a new project. That's why they're joining us today. This is going to be the next Veggie Tales. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's called Dead Sea Squirrels. Very clever. And they launched a Kickstarter campaign this week. And they're trying to raise $1.2 million to get this thing off the ground. We talk a little bit about why and how and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. And and um, you get to audition, actually, during the interview. Oh, yes. You'll, you'll hear. Yeah, Just, it's going to be great. Is it is it very nerdy that this feels like a career high for me, Michelle? I could die tomorrow and be happy. If we're being honest. I'm just, not to make this about me, but I'm a child of the 80s, grew up in the 90s. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I saw Where Is My Hairbrush. I remember being a child watching this video and saying, this is high comedy. This is like, this is the pinnacle of comedy. Mm-hmm. Like Dick Van Dyke, take a seat. Yes. <laughs> Move in Larry the Cucumber. Yes. Absolutely. I know exactly what you mean. And I, I however, um, in high school was obsessed with this little band called the Newsboys. Oh my gosh. Obsessed. Who and was then it? the hair. The oh my gosh. Hair. And the accents. Oh yeah. I actually interviewed them, fun fact, live Did you? in high school. Yeah. Um, and then um, in college, my song with my boyfriend was um, Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer. And we have the producer of that song here. That relationship what? didn't work out though, Steve. So do you, do you have any comments on that? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're welcoming Mike Narwaki. Did I say that right? Naraki. Naraki. It's really close. Yeah, yeah. It's really close. Naraki, if you want to be, like if you want to be completely accurate, it's Navrotsky, but Ooh, that no. was left at Ellis Island. I like the so, rolling of that yeah, R. Yeah. All right. So Mike is <laughs> AKA Larry the Cucumber. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hello. Fame. <gasps> <gasps> what? I didn't want to ask you to do it. I already so shock funny. you and knock your earbud out. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Wait, is it pronounced Larry the Cucumber? <laughs> cucumber. Only in France. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I love the voice. That was like, that oh was like you said that, hello, and it was like Sean Mendez just sang a note for them. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, ba- I mean, honestly, we're moms of, we have, uh, how many kids? We have five kids between us, almost six. Almost six. Yeah, and I all... homeschool, which means Veggie Tales is all we oh, watch. You know that's is true. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Oh. And also, we have Steve Taylor, who is a legendary producer mm, legendary. and wear a very cool suits, I must say. Yes. Yes. Wow. If you haven't seen his suits, then you're going to have to check that Epic out. Epic style. Um, yeah. But we are welcoming you guys on our 
humble little podcast today um, where we think we're funny. So the more we laugh, the better. Okay, we don't, We're not sure. We're still trying to figure that out. But we want to talk to you guys about a new project you're working on that um, as moms of littles, we are so excited about. Yes. The Dead Sea Squirrels. Squirrels. That's right. The squirrels. <laughs> it's it's a, a series based off a of bad pun. So which is... <laughs> Which is right in my alley. You know, that is in your wheelhouse. And, yeah. <laughs> awesome. awesome. So tell us a little bit about the premise in case people haven't seen it yet. Okay, so uh, Michael is a 10-year-old, uh, soon-to-be fifth grader who is spending the summer with his dad in uh, Israel uh, on a dig near the, uh, on the Dead Sea along some, some caves. And Michael is exploring the caves with his best buddy, Justin, and he comes upon these salt-encrusted, dehydrated rodents and thinks that they would make the coolest souvenirs to bring back from his trip and also the coolest, make them the coolest kids in the fifth grade. So he sm smuggles them back home in his backpack and uh, uh, just kind of sets them up in his room as souvenirs um, under an open window as he goes to bed and it rains that night. And of course, you know, they, they haven't seen rain for millennia, these squirrels being trapped in the, the salty sea caves. And, um, and uh, they get rained on and they come back to life. And it uh, turns out that Merle and Pearl Squirrel are a, a Jewish couple. Um, they grew up uh, uh, in the first century in Galilee and took an ill-advised vacation down the Jordan River uh, to the Dead Sea because Merle, you know, always wanted to see what it was like to not sink, you know, sure. about the Dead Sea. So he wanted to not sink. So, but, but they get stuck there and trapped for millennia, but yes. they, uh, they contain the wisdom of the ages, you know, after having seen uh, the life of Christ and the apostles in the first century. So they have a lot of great wisdom to share with Michael and his friends. And they're obviously, uh, you know, fish out of water, um, squirrels out of water in the in the modern age. So it's 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 a really fun setup. But really, at the heart of it is is you know fun biblical values for kids in in, in great adventure. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's sort of the show in a nutshell, so to speak. I love it. I love yeah. it. I, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the whole the whole thing about dehydrating is fascinating to me. So they, mm -hmm. the kid grabs them and they're like taxidermied, right? Is that it? Yeah, like they're, preserved. They're, they're, they're preserved. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he thinks he thinks they're dead, and uh, you know, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, and, and and wonders why they don't smell, you know, because yeah, <laughs> that, I, that I was thinking about the smell. <laughs> but yeah, because as a mom, they're not really dead; they're just resting. We have I have a nine year old boy. She has an eight year old boy. Mm -hmm. I would one hundred percent see them snatching up a dehydrated taxidermy oh, animal. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, it'll, and packing that in. It'll, it'll, my, it'll, sure. It would happen. Yeah. The, in fact, the uh, so it's based off my book series of the yeah. same uh, title. Yeah. But the characters, Michael and Justin, are based off of my own son, Michael, and his best buddy, Justin, when Aww. they were that age. So I had a lot of, a lot of you know, true life experience to draw Such from. moms. Aww. <laughs> okay. So Steve, you, I assume, just picked these books up at Barnes & Noble and thought... This is a really interesting book to me, and I'd like to produce a cartoon. <laughs> All I read is, is literature, and um, it was no, uh, no. Mike and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, he brought me on to do some uh, things back in the day with mm -hmm. uh, Veggie Tales and write some mm -hmm. songs, and, uh, and so we we get on great. And now we're actually both professors at Lipscomb University. And uh, we have a uh, cinematic arts program that also has an animation program. Yeah, and so awesome. Mike uh, was showing me his book series and is hoping to get an animated series. And uh, I thought, well, you know, we've got an animation program. It's led by Tom Bancroft, who is a Disney animator who has worked on everything from Young Simba and the Lion King to designing Mushu the Dragon. Mm -hmm. Like, cool. yeah, really good students. Why don't we try to... Put this together ourselves and yeah how, how, how what would that look like so <laughs> how hard could it be <laughs> how hard could that be yeah <laughs> every time every time <laughs> i would do the merle voice saying that but it wouldn't be the same you don't know merle yet Ooh, so, right. yeah. so are you going are you going to voice over merle yeah yeah i'm merle i'm merle so yeah yeah yeah, yeah can yes. we hear merle though real quick okay, let me just ask merle a question can i ask I merle know, a question i don't know if it would make any difference okay uh, all right okay let me see if i can remember <laughs> okay, there we go. Here's Merle. Okay, so Merle, hi. Hello, um, what are you? Hello. I know you're from um, the Middle East. Um, what do you think Merle, of the snow Merle, in... Merle, Merle of Nazareth? Yes, Merle of Nazareth. Oh. What do you think of the snow in Nashville today? The snow! It's awful! 
There you go. <laughs> there you go. Is there like a geriatric British squirrel that I can voice over at some point? That's really yeah. my VO sweet you're, spot. Elderly you know, there British. You hear that voice? We will do that audition right now. Can we hear that? Perfect. Go for it. <laughs> All right. And yes, three, abso- two, one. Absolutely. Go. But wait, have I also been preserved in the salt for many millennia as well? Like Angel yeah. Lansbury. Or am I? Oh, look at that. I know. If you ever have need, here I am. My rates are very reasonable. I'm SAG eligible, but I haven't joined yet, which means I work for Tuppence. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tuppence line that sold me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I love that. So, okay. So now you're moving forward with the animated series. You've, well, hopefully, because we have a Kickstarter. So you've done the pilot. Yes. Right. It's almost done and uh, it's looking really good. Sweet. Uh, the theme song is done. Um, so we're just a weeks away from finishing the pilot. Oh, awesome. awesome. And, yeah, and then... we're, we're working, uh, you know, Steve was talking about our animation program. We're working with that anima- animation program and in conjunction with uh, Muck Putty Animation out of New Zealand. Uh, so just it's just a great team that's been put together to produce this pilot. And it's looking mm-hmm. great. That's awesome. Amazing. So then will we be able, like, will the public be able to see the pilot? Or is that only for pitching purposes or something? Explain, talk to me like I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> you, Steve, you want to take that one? Okay, yes. Well, the idea was that we want the public to see the pilot as soon as possible. We're trying to get a series funded. Right. But the big dream, and the reason I'm involved in this, is because right now, without a pilot, and maybe without a series, if we took it around to the Netflixes of the world, I think they would probably say, oh, yeah, we like this. We want to buy it. And then they become the owners of the Dead Sea Squirrels, and now Mike is their employee. And I just don't like that idea. I think mm. he should be in charge of this series, and he should be the one who says it's this and it's not this. So yes. the reason we're doing this is this way is because I don't want the neither of us want to see the content watered down because yeah. we have soulless corporate overlords who are telling us what it's supposed to be. Right. And so that's why we're trying to do it independently. And uh, that's why we put together a Kickstarter campaign, mm-hmm. and which we hope will work. If that doesn't work, we'll go to friends and uh, people who are, who are uh, you know, believe in the project, but somehow we're going to get this made and get it out there. Yeah. I wanted to stay with it. Tuppence, Tuppence, uh, Tuppence. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> please, Tuppence for the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to say, I think we need this series right now. We really do. I mean, there is, a, there has been a void of mm. new funny original christian content for kids yes. so yeah. i cannot wait to see this thing made i'm not saying if i'm saying when because i want to see merlin pearl materializing on my screen yes <laughs> for sure so um yeah and i think what you steve what you said about kind of this whole debate right now about big tech and you know so much control and all that it's, it's such a great point to bring up because yeah let's get political let's do it, no, no, we're not doing it. um so i think that uh you know, having control over that and also because there is a, a scriptural element to yeah. it and, you know, wanting to maintain that for our kids to have that not watered down, not not politicized uh, cartoon and commentary with good biblical life skills is so important yes. and definitely something that we and our, our fans <laughs> – we have so many. Um, <laughs> want to see? <laughs> I'm so sorry. My mom guys. is listening. <laughs> I'm excited for her. <laughs> but no, I think that's so exciting, and I love, yeah. I love that because I mean, I grew up with Veggie Tales, and then before that mm-hmm. was Salty, which was creepy. So um, I'm sorry if you produced Salty just singing songs. But salty <laughs> had some fine musical numbers, though. Like, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. There were some, there were some tight jams on right, Salty. Right. But well, I think Dead Sea Squirrels would be much let's better. Let's not throw the Bible out with the bath. Sal- <laughs> salty was a, a walking Bible, right? Is that what yes. Salty was? He was yeah. a walking hymnal. To be a walking Bible oh, would have been like verging on oh, sacrilege, that would have been I over think. The line. Okay. Right. He was blue. Yeah. And it's like the well, precursor of the blue man group, that. I think. Mike, well, tell them why uh, we get to use Jesus in the Dead Sea Squirrels, where we couldn't use Jesus in Veggie Tales. <gasps> right, oh, right. Yes. So we, we drew we drew the line in the sand um, at the very early years of Veggie Tales to never show Jesus as a vegetable. You know, mm. uh, which you know would just you know have been stepping over the line. It would have been like making salty a Bible instead of a hymnal. Sure. Um, and so um, you know, which always let me interrupt there, yeah. Leanne and Michelle. If you had to make that call back in the day, 
and it was your job to decide whether Jesus could be portrayed as a vegetable or not, how would you have voted? Oh, well, my 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 question. my question is which vegetable? Because then, as soon as you place a vegetable on him, that is now the holiest of vegetables. <laughs> so you have to be very careful in the vegetable, and I just don't feel like that's yeah. fair to vegetables because then there'll be like a hierarchy and you know yeah. dissension among the vegetables. So that's where I would vote no. You would vote no. You can't I, make I, Jesus a vegetable. You can make Jesus like the. I'm the farmer. I'm trying to even picture what that would look like in the, you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to conjure a mental picture of that. I, I think I probably would have gone no as well. That's a great question. So, I think we made the call, right call. Yeah, right. you did. But that's a great improv um, scene right there. Yes, Jesus is. is. Jesus is a vegetable. Yes, so, so, uh, <laughs> so with with Dead Sea Squirrels, it just opens up the opportunity. And really one of the reasons why uh, th it's an idea that I've had for for many years, even back in the VeggieTales days, to, to look for an opportunity to tell more New Testament stories. And mm -hmm. so um, this allows us to do that. And we don't and, and and, you know, we don't spend our time in the books or in the series in Bible days, we bring these two characters forward in time. And so we're able to flash back to some scenes. Um, yes. But but most of the action takes place in the modern world with, mm -hmm. with Michael and his buddies in the fifth grade. Um, so it, it awesome. just makes stuff really relatable to kids. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and so they, you can flash back to kind of their firsthand account of what they saw Jesus doing, and that's kind right. of how you weave that in. I love that. Exactly, that yeah. Creative. So in the books, we call it the squirrel's eye view chapter, you know, so it's Merle and Pearl in the tree, you know, watching yes. the sermon. Yes, we eat the popcorn. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I know. Well, I have to say, my kids, you know, watch the video, and, and they immediately were like, well, is it on Netflix? It is, where, where can we find it? Is it on Amazon? <laughs> not yet. Go, 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 get, go get your tuppets from your yeah, go get your piggy bank allowance chart. Smash it and pour it into the Kickstarter. <laughs> well, one and one of the one of the great uh, incentives on the Kickstarter is a download of the of the pilot when we get that done. So, oh, um, yeah, yeah, so cool! That's, that's exciting. And that, that's, 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 a, that's like at a twenty five. I think the twenty that's at the twenty five dollar level. So oh. it's not. You know, I mean, so it's, it's, you know. it's really a bargain at any price. So <laughs> yes, and but, to also know that you supported it because once you do see it available. For viewing, you you know, there's some ownership for families, you know, to know yes. that oh, we supported this and we we made that happen, and that, yeah. um, and, and you know, if you really want good quality um, content that's safe for your kids to watch, it's nice to kind of have know that you were part of it. That's such a good yeah. lesson too in teaching our kids to vote with their dollars, which is such a conversation that we're all having right now. Like, what a great teaching moment mm -hmm. for our children in yes. all seriousness. Yes. Let's put yeah. our dollars toward what you want to see more of, right? Right. I love exactly. That. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the incentives on the Kickstarter, because this is always fun about Kickstarters, because the yes. more you give, the more yeah. you get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had our first experience, at least my first experience in um, making plush toys. Uh, so we thought, hey, we, you know, we got squirrels, they're cute, they're cuddly, we need a plush toy. And so I just went to the internet and the first company that came up, I ordered, I sent them the photos of, you know, the animated Merlin Pearl, as you can see behind Mike, mm -hmm. and said, here, make, a, make plush toys out of these for like $139 a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, you get what you pay for. So oh. <laughs> I wish I had a photo to send you of Merle. He looks, he looks like he's actually just been lobotomized. Like he's, oh like his eyes are kind of, <laughs> or maybe like he's just about ready to let, that moment right before he gets run over. It's just like, <laughs> and, and it was not cuddly. It, it was, it was, it was like, ah, I got to put this in a closet and put his eyes over or something like that. Oh, so, man. So we ended up, so Mike ended up calling up a friend who used to be in charge of uh, DreamWorks uh, market. What was it? DreamWorks product? The consumer products. Consumer yeah, yeah, products. Yeah. And so he yeah, put yeah. in touch with a, a professional plush toy maker. <laughs> and it was amazing the difference that uh, getting a professional sure. makes. So, <laughs> so but, the, but the ones, are you going to, those going to go in the Dead Sea Squirrel Museum at some point? Then? Uh, maybe so, yes. They'll yeah. get a eventually because I've already paid for them. So someday I'm going to <laughs> Uh, <laughs> lobotomized Merle is going to be staring at me. <laughs> I mean, why That's, you do this? <laughs> That's a uh, good, like, so, uh, white. Yeah. So we have, uh, yeah, we have, yes. and Merle's, uh, we have, um, let's see. So we have the, the digital download. We have a certificate mm -hmm. of, uh, what, what's, what's the, it's, it's like a diploma, right, Steve? What, what, what's it yeah, called? It is. It's called the, uh, it's called the patron of the squirrels. Um, patron. Because, uh, patron you know, this the indicates the fact that you have actually help bring the dead to life. And so it's very special. It's got our sign signatures on it. It's got two little, you know, squirrel paw prints. Paw prints. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty adorable. And then we put your name in it. Uh, and if you have multiple family members, we actually 
put their names in it separate. So, you know, they each get their own. Yeah. Um, awesome. What else we got? Mike, we oh, got. Uh, and uh, we got we got like a pin, like a uh, um, uh, a scout pin. Uh, yes, like Dead Sea Scroll, Scroll Scout pin. Yep, yep. Uh, nice. We've got a box set of books. So the first books uh, in the Dead Sea Squirrel series are already out in the market, and we're doing a special run uh, uh, six bo book boxed edition, uh, which is Ooh. exciting. So we got those together. Okay. We've got t-shirts, um, uh, which I love the t-shirts. On the front, they say, we're not dead yet. And then on the back, it's the the, the Merle and Pearl skeletalized in uh, you know in Michael's backpack as they're going through security. You know, <laughs> oh, on the, your back, I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> so. awesome. So, is it there though? Like a like a is there a voiceover or a character too? Like for a higher price point, something like that. Yes. So okay. I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of I'm like I'm listening. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you send us uh, you know photos of the character you want and a description. Uh, Tom Bancroft, who is again a Disney yeah. animator, will create that character and we will work them into a scene. Into scene. Right now, it's a non-speaking role, just because for obvious reasons. But um, but I got to say, cool. Leanne, if it was your character, we would make her a uh, what an Egyptologist or something like that. A, 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 yeah, a, absolutely. Oh, you know, on loan from the Crown. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We yeah. might make you a special deal. And uh, right. oh, okay, done, done. I'll have my one. people. I'll have, we'll have our people call your people. Mm -hmm. That sounds and great. My personal oh. favorite is uh, there's another tier where we take the theme song, and if you send us the name of like your kid and you know the kinds of uh, activities that they like or something like that, we replace Dead Sea Squirrels with uh, you know the name of your kid, oh, and then we fun. talk up, we make up rhymes like a silly song about your kid and re-record yeah. it. That's awesome. Right? So speaking yeah. of music, though, is there is this a musical? Kind of like Veggie Tales was, or oh. yeah. So there's music in every episode. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to oh, make yeah, that really yeah. important. And in fact, uh, those those flashback scenes that we go to are are always musical. And so in this in the pilot episode, uh, there's a big musical number as Merle and Pearl are floating down the Jordan toward toward the Dead Sea. So that sort of kind of introduces the musical component. But there will be a song in, in every episode. So so are you saying that Jesus might sing? You, you know, oh, you Steve Steve. I'm back to Leanna Michelle. So Leanna Michelle, <laughs> tell us, should Jesus sing or not? And we made, we I made, just, made I just life. veer on the side of reverence on this. I don't mean to be pearl clutchy. <laughs> I just don't think I. Can... I think I think Jesus should sing, and he should belt out a Broadway too. Really? <laughs> you want to see some soft shoe? I do. I do. You're yeah. going to answer for that There's on the Judgment no Day. Like God, business like no business. <laughs> <only knows. laughs> I don't want to see Jesus do a oh. jazz. That's why I don't. Think. Yeah, no spirit fingers. No, no jazz yeah, yeah. Maybe Merle and Pearl will sing about what Jesus is saying. You know, there that's you another go. option. But if he's yeah. dancing in the background or something, I just think that would be really. <laughs> I'm sure Spiritual. Jesus had a sense of humor. Like, I'm sure he would actually be delighted to see himself in cartoon form singing something. But <laughs> <laughs> so, if he's quoting the Psalms, I, I suppose you know that could be sung. You know, that yeah. would be all right. Yes, yeah. yes, of course, of course. Yes. I'm I'm supportive of this 100. percent Oh my goodness, <laughs> she's the risk okay. taker in this venture. So she's <laughs> like, do it, and I'm like, okay. Uh. We have we did ask our followers for a few questions. Um, so about this series, and um, 87 people asked if you ever found your hairbrush, Mike, um, which I'm sure you get that question all the time. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, although, you know, we actually highlight that. If you go to our Kickstarter promo uh, yeah. video, we, you know, I find a hairbrush. I found it in the <laughs> waterfall. <laughs> That's right. At Lipscomb <laughs> University. I love it. <laughs> That's right. Um, of all places. Oh, someone would like to know who is going to be vo voicing Pearl. Hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, she is a local Nashville actress. Um, uh, Jenny Littleton is her name, and okay. she's wonderful. And awesome. uh, Steve, Steve, you've known her for quite a while, right, Jenny? I have. I've worked with her a couple times on the films that I've made, and uh, she's just fantastic. Uh, oh, she's got an adorable, adorable high voice. <laughs> and, uh, did we have to, did we pitch it her at all? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. That's that's all her natural voice, which is fantastic. I oh, I pitched awesome. her shift the Merle voice a little bit just so I could sound smaller, you know. Little, yeah. Little, little. <laughs> um so what, originally, I know Mike you wrote the books, but Dead Sea Squirrels, where did that idea originate from? So yeah, so that's the the that's the bad pun that I came up with years ago <laughs> to, uh, to to form the show around. Um and obviously, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in a cave, you know, and then, you know, survived until, you know, the modern era. 
Uh, and so that's kind of what was behind this. So it's sort of the Dead Sea Scrolls meets Encino Man, <laughs> the old Brendan <laughs> Fraser movie. But um, but yeah, so that that was the concept initially that was floating around in my mind for for years as a way to you know be able to tell more New Testament stories in animation. Um, but when I left Big Idea full time, I was you know there from the start of the company in in '93 up until 2016. Um, you know, so I was looking for a way to, to make that into an animated series. And then my buddy, uh, Dan Lynch, who became my uh, literary agent, actually asked me to, you know, consider it as an early reader series. Um, and I had never done that before, but I thought it was a great idea. So I did some research and, you know, just figured out a way to, okay, how to, how to, you know, plot this into an early reader series and then pitched it to Tyndale Publishing. Uh, in, it's, they're a Christian publisher in Chicago. They loved it. And then um, did a six book deal, which is now a 12 book deal. I'm working on book 10 nice. right now. Um, and a series. It's and a series, be. yeah. And so, speaking and, yeah, and then bringing those the... to life and own animation is, is, you know, the next goal. Awesome. Okay, so um, we will obviously put a link in our show notes yes. and on our media, social media to the Kickstarter campaign. So you guys are already rolling. Um, you're At this point, when we're talking, you're 24 hours in. You already have over 20,000, I think, which is awesome. So we need 1.2, so we need to, you know, get more money there. But uh, anything else that we should tell uh, our listeners or our fan base? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing Fanny back. Fanny oh, back. sorry. Ah. Oh my gosh. I can't breathe. I can't. I legit I can't, can't breathe. Bring oh Fanny God. back. Yeah, we can edit that. <laughs> That's, awesome. one That's one of their hit songs. That's one of their hit songs. I mean, have you ever heard of Justin Timberlake? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, he's, from, he's from right down the road, actually. You know, Justin is. Oh yeah. So, yeah, awesome. yeah, he's from Memphis. So, uh, oh, that's right. but yeah. no, no, we're we're so uh, we're just so excited about this. And um, uh, again, with with the stories that we tell, we want to be, provide parents with the, with the resource to pass on biblical values to their kids in a really fun and entertaining way, um, and in a way that's gonna you know just you know just last. You know, I think mm -hmm. you know I look at Veggie Tales. You know you know, 25, 27 years uh, strong and still going. Um, and it's been so meaningful to kids, uh, you know, and Steve and I teach at, the, you know, college students and many of whom grew up with Veggie Tales to so to see what kind of impact story can have in kids' lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just super powerful. And to be able to provide that for a new generation um, is, is our goal and what we would love to see happen. Yeah. I, I teach college students too. I mentioned that to you and I've been showing this video um, to my students and I ask them like did you guys watch VeggieTales growing up they're like yeah and I show yeah. them that they're all so excited about it so it's so timeless that's <laughs> awesome. awesome all right well thanks so much for joining us you guys and we'll be excited to you know keep our eye on that and mm -hmm. Leanne will be in touch about voicing um her Tuppence character the paleontologist <laughs> yeah. so that's gonna be awesome <laughs> thanks so much thank you guys so much I don't know is this all when I can you hear me touch it I don't think well, let's let's just start talking, and maybe we'll see. Oh, oh the red light is on. I think I think that means it's live. Good. Okay, yeah, Hi, that's guys. right. Well, um, well, we're just rambling. We should introduce ourselves. My goodness. Uh, hello, for those of you who do not know us, uh, my name is Tabitha. My name is Trinity. And we are the hosts of a very popular podcast, The Way, The Tea, and The Life. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we're also the director of the women's ministries over at the Light Sprinkles of Life, Life Streams, of Living Holy Waters, Water, of Russian River Church. And uh, we've been uh, in that post for three wonderful decades, isn't that right? That's right. That's right. Almost almost as long as Jesus was alive. Third. And we... <laughs> That's right. We've seen a lot of uh, we've seen a lot of children's programming come mm -hmm. through our church in that time, haven't we? That we have, that we have, and you know we wanted to come and do a segment here on the uh, Leanne and Michelle podcast because we understand uh, they were talking about another Christian Christian children's series. That's right. Uh, the the creator of this new series, which we're going to get to in a second, is a uh, Mac Naraki. Uh, and his good buddy, Stephen Taylor. They've mm -hmm. been working together for a long time now. Yeah. And they both had a hand in creating VeggieTales. Am I right in that? I don't believe that Stephen Tyler. Oh. No, Stephen Tyler's the lead singer of Aerosmith and a huge singer. <laughs> Are you okay? I just think it's very shameful that his name is one, just one letter away from Stephen Tyler. I, no. would, I would read the lyrics to Walk This Way, but they would make you blush. I'm not going to do that. Love in an elevator is especially sinful. I'm not worried. Anyway, um, no, I don't believe that Steve Taylor was involved in the VeggieTales. I he was involved in some real holy music, though. We'll get to that later. But uh, right. Mike was uh, Larry the Cucumber. That's right. Which I have some thoughts about 
um, about Larry hum about humanizing vegetables. I just I, I don't know that that's scriptural. Well, let's get into it right now. Is it a sin to anthrop? Careful with those big words there. I'm going to try that again. Mm -hmm. To anthropomorphize vegetables. I think that if uh, the Lord wanted vegetables to be anthropomorphized, okay. he would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I, I never really gave much theological thought to this issue before. Now, of course, I love that they incorporate scripture mm -hmm. um, in song. Uh, I think those things are great. But I think on a, on a closer inspection, you're right. If the Lord intended for vegetables to talk, He'd have created them that way, wouldn't He? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then we wouldn't eat them, right? Because they'd be like, "Don't eat me, don't eat me." Or or we would have, but it would have been a nice experience both for the vegetable and for us. You know, like imagine a singing salad that sings a little hymn for you as you as you eat it. That just mm. that could be really nice. But the Lord didn't the Lord didn't set things up that way. Perhaps in the Garden of Eden. The fruits and vegetables oh, did sing. That you know what, and maybe Could Mike been. knew that. Maybe he had some insider info into a prophetic word about some about the intended creation. That's very possible. That's possible. Uh, that, so that Mike, it's okay. Mike Naraki, if you did receive prophetic word about uh, what life was like in the Garden of Eden, uh, then you are absconded. Um, otherwise, uh, you're a big, big sinner. Is mm -hmm. the problem for yeah. making vegetables talk? Well, Mac now has a new project um, right. that we should talk about and discuss if whether or not it's a sin. Right. Um, that is our special special skill. That's it's right. Telling you where the sin is in your life. That's right. And this new project is also for children, mm -hmm. and it's called the Dead Sea Squirrels. And we'll stop you right there because everyone knows puns are a sin. Mm -hmm. So don't put a, a pun in, in the title of your project. Mm -hmm. Let's not be cute. Let's leave that to the baby Jesus. Yeah. Baby Jesus is the cutest thing he ever. He was the cutest baby born and that's ever a fact. in the history of babies. And the um, Dead Sea Scrolls is the play on words. The Dead Sea Scrolls, not the Dead Sea Squirrels. That's right. That's right. Just in case, so we're clear here. Um, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't like puns. I think that puns are intentionally deceptive. Also, I don't trust squirrels entirely. Uh, did you know their front teeth never stop growing? <gasps> did not know that. They have to keep gnawing on things in order to keep those uh, chompers in check. It's true. Oh, I did not know that. It's true. That's fascinating and very, very sinful. It's, yeah, it's upsetting to me. Um, I admire their work ethic. I will give them that. Any animal that stores up food all year mm -hmm. long and shoves it in a little hole in a tree has my right, respect. Right, right, um, But I, I fear they may also potentially carry some disease as well. They do. They do. I think that the black plague, no, that was rats, but probably their cousins. The bubonic so. plague is what you're thinking of, yeah. and that was rats. That was. Same thing, right? Rats and squirrels. <laughs> She's having a day, y'all. I'm so sorry. Squirrels are very vulnerable little animal, though, aren't they? They are. They really they are. are. They are. So what would you have had the children discover in that cave instead, if not squirrels? I'm just the, curious. The scrolls themselves. The scrolls. And would the scrolls have, have talked, or would the children yes. just read aloud from the no, Dead Sea Scrolls? The scrolls would have talked because they're the living more to God. So I don't know why we need to to make squirrels do the talking when the Bible is the living word of God, and the Bible could have just sprung up and started talking. What about this as a series? Two young boys. On an expedition with one of their fathers, stumble into a cave, mm. find the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm. They sit down and they read them out loud. And that's the whole series. That's the whole series. I think that would be a fine... I think my kids would be into that. ...piece of creative work. I do. I believe that would be uh, very exciting. And I don't need Sammy the Scroll to do a musical number. No. Let's just let the scroll, as you so eloquently say, just do the talking for itself. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And, uh, you know, and maybe they can break out in song when they get to the Psalms. Well, King David did sing them as songs. He did. And so I think I can grant some creative license mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, but I think it's just two children sitting in a damp, dark cave in the Middle East by the light of an oil lamp. That's right. Reading scrolls would be a very exciting. Just wonderful viewing. And alternative to these other, you know, Oh, these overly minute cartoons. Yeah, it's just so much Look color. Look at me, I'm, and, I'm punching someone yeah, now, and now yeah. there's blah, I have different blam. voices, and I Right. So many no. storylines to keep track of. No, just two kids. <laughs> sitting in a cave. <laughs> reading from a scroll. That's so I think we should start our Kickstarter for that. See how they see how our Kickstarter does. See and if we can raise money for We're that. gonna call our our uh, series just the Dead Sea Scrolls. And we're gonna release it at the same time as Mr. Naraki's and Mr. Taylor's. And may the best 
series win. Well, I sense I sense a spirit of competition in your heart. Tabitha. Well, it's righteous anger is what's fueling it, and so I think in this circumstance it is permissible. Okay, well I think that's it for today. We mm -hmm. thank you so much for tuning in. To yes, that is. Is it, it a sin? Well, uh, that was a fun episode. That was one fun. for the books. Yeah, if I do say so myself, I rather enjoyed that. That was fun. I could do that again. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we're very sorry about Tabitha and Trinity. They're so judgy. Yeah, they really are. We will talk to them, but I'm not sure there's much we can do at no, this point. Much They're out of control. They are. They're those gals. Yeah, they've lost it. Big thanks to Steve Taylor and Mike Nerocki for their time today and for their vision and for all the amazing content they have created already. Yes, oh my gosh. exactly, exactly. So we'll post a link to Dead Sea Squirrels Kickstarter and more information in the video. Really cool, well-produced video that they mm -hmm. have to talk about the project in our show notes. And we will see you next time, friends. Bye.